What kind of motor should you use for your engineering project? There are so many different kinds of motors, gearboxes, and ways of altering torque and speed. To better understand the different motors I'm going to show you, you must understand work. Whenever you use a motor, you need to understand that you have a finite amount of energy to work with, and you can use that energy to push more torque or to push with more speed. A brushed DC motor is incredibly common and cheap. It is super easy to set up with minimal electronics. Many project kits comes with one and a gearbox to go along with it. The problem with this is that the motor is inefficient and can be pretty heavy. A brush DC motor is also very common nowadays and can be found in RC planes, the fans in your desktop, and electronic bikes. These motors need more complex circuitry to move, but they can be given much greater precision. However, the electronic speed controllers that go with them are often way more expensive than the motors themselves. A stepper motor is a type of brushless motor that is manufactured in a special way to have discrete angle steps. This allows for high precision movements and great consistency. This is why you see them in things like 3D printers and other computer numerical controlled devices. They're main drawback is their strength and max speed. Additionally, the electronics can get prohibitively expensive as the motors scale. An induction motor is one of the simplest motors conceptually, and that is why it is often found in things like cheap box fans. Take the fan apart and you'll find a half decent motor that is far too heavy to be used for a mobile project, but could be useful for a stationary one. I used it in my last hackathon for a wind tunnel. The last motor on my list is the servo motor. You probably know it from the 9 gram servo motors that come in every electronics kit, but they come in all different shapes and sizes. 9 gram servos are great for projects that need to rotate at specific angles under 360 degrees. They are very easy to control with electronics and can even be controlled with a 555 timer, except they are pretty weak and they already have a built-in gearbox, so gearing them down more makes them very slow. One final note is that gears and belts can really help you in a pinch. If you have a motor that spins really fast but doesn't have the force you need, just gear it down. If it doesn't spin fast enough and it has a lot of torque, then gear it up.